everyone. I'm a consultant obstetrician here at St George's Hospital and I've been asked by the network to speak about enhanced the enhanced recovery programme that we actually set up at um, St George's in 2012. Um, this was done on the back of the national programme um, for elective surgery where they brought in enhanced recovery for all patients having general surgery and St George's Hospital was actually at the forefront of the gynaecology bringing it in for the, our gynaecology patients so we were asked to look at it with respect to our obstetric patients who are having elective caesarean sections part of our um, surface improvement programme um, and from starting the idea of this and we actually started it by taking it to the MSLC and our user group that's the first place that I went to with the idea it actually took us five months to get it going so it started at the beginning of September 2012 so we've been going now for two years what I'm going to go through is what it took for us to set it up um, and where we've got to now and how our results have changed and the impact that it's had first thing we did was looked at the suitability of our elective section patients obviously a tertiary unit here we've got a lot of high-risk patients having elective surgery so are they really suitable and we basically took a, um, a six-month um, cohort of patients and did a very simple look at what their full blood count was pre-operatively and post-operatively and actually for our elective cesarean section patients most of them are um, in, in a good condition um, from an anemia side of thing which is really the only thing we were thinking about because we were wondering if we could plan um, the ladies who we knew would have elective sections should we give them extra iron and things like that but actually we didn't need to we looked at the cohort that we had for six months and thought we really didn't need to do that we surveyed the patients on the ward after they'd had a cesarean section before we started the program to say would you be interested in having the option of going home earlier and basically we found that a third of women said yes I would like to have that option and it was very mixed who said yes and who said no there were the women who were having their second caesarean section they knew it all before and they had to get back to their to toddler that they'd never left before and there were the women who were um, had had um, had their toddler at home said no I'm staying in hospital it's exhausting at home please don't send me home early mm -hmm. so we had quite vari varied um, issues about that um, we certainly had to do consultation with the community midwives because one of the things about the enhanced recovery program is they get better quicker they're going home quicker um, and we didn't want any increased workload for the um, community midwives. They're being spread thinner and thinner. Um, and again, with GPs, if we were um, sending people home, we didn't want them, the patients, have to contact the GPs because things weren't right. Um, the, our patient information was actually overdue for a, um, an update, so we did that and put the enhanced recovery into it. Um, and then again, one of the key things about enhanced recovery is getting people moving quicker. So we had to look at our mobilisation criteria. Certainly here, and I'm sure in the other hospitals um, and the ones I had worked in previously, if you had a caesarean section, you didn't get out of bed until the next day. Well, actually, a key thing is getting out of bed the same day. So we had to make sure that these women who were all getting spinals were actually safe to get out of bed. We didn't want them getting out of the bed before their legs were, were working. So that had to be developed with the anaesthetist and make it simple for the midwives to understand it and make sure the patients were safe. Educating the staff in all areas was a big undertaking and is always ongoing. We have to make sure that the staff, doctors and midwives, in the antenatal clinic, out in the community, out in the day assessment and on the postnatal ward, and the theatre staff and the recovery staff all know the principles of the Enhanced Recovery Programme. Um, and those are the main things are optimising patients for, for surgery. So in the olden days, they all got starved and dehydrated before they went to theatre. We don't now. We reduce their starvation period. We reduce their dehydration period. So they're actually going into surgery in a better physiological state. They're not just recovering from their operation as well as their starvation period. Um, so women now can drink until um, two hours before their, operate, uh, before their operation. We are black and white about it to make it more simple. We do say you can drink water until six o'clock in the morning. If they, we know they're definitely third on the list, we can make them, they can drink a bit more when they come in. But certainly in our unit, uh, the order of our list can change at the drop of the hat. Somebody's blood test didn't come back from the lab or something like that. Somebody's partner can't get there for an hour, so it always changes. So we do still keep, just drink until six o'clock. Um, it's, we still, again, for simplicity, we say don't eat until midnight. If you're the first on the list, you could eat until 2 o'clock in the morning, but hopefully you're not. Hopefully you're asleep then. So just to keep it really simple, for us giving the information for the patients, we've said no food from midnight and kept it like that. So our, the, one of the key things afterwards is making sure that they can eat and drink afterwards. So we had to go to recovery and say, please can you make sure these ladies are actually given a glass of water in recovery? 
So within minutes of being out of theatre, they can have their first drink. Or certainly when they first get back up to the ward, which again in our unit, and I know it's different than others, within an hour somebody is offering them a drink or the dad has gone down to M&S and bought them the cappuccino they've been longing for. And again, eating as well. Let them eat as soon as they actually feel like it. Listening to bowel sounds, you know, I know that it still goes on sometimes. It doesn't need to be done. If they are not feeling sick, they're not being sick, um, they can eat. Um, and like I said, mobilising. It's mobilising out of the bed, and we're only asking them to get from the bed to the chair, which is next to the bed. That is the only mobilisation we're asking them to do on the first day. But it's making sure that they're safe and they're empowered to do it. Um, removing the catheter at 6 o'clock in the morning, um, that's a key thing for getting them moving. There was a debate, and I know some units take it out at midnight. Um, I won't go into that, especially because we've got the international opinion on um, bladders and the pelvic floor <laughs> and childbirth <laughs> sitting here. Um, we um, aim to take the catheter out at 6 o'clock in the morning so that they, within three to four hours, hopefully they've, gone, they've got up and walked along the corridor and gone to the toilet. Um, getting people dressed in their home clothes is a key thing about the enhanced recovery program for the general su surgical patients. Um, it makes you feel better, makes you ready to get, to get going. Um, here in this unit, we've had um, a brilliant team who've set up um, a discharge video. So uh, patients need an awful lot of, pa ladies I'll say, should get, need to get an awful lot of information when they go home. And midwives have to often had to say it repeatedly to all the women going home that day. So here in St George's, we've actually made a discharge DVD which has got all the information they need to know about registering their birth, the pelvic floor exercises, um, have they had a smear, going to the GP for a checkup, those kind of things. Um, and so that DVD used to be put on once a day, but now we've found that not everyone can access it. So we put it on a few times during the day to make sure that they get that information. And the women who have an elective cesarean section are asked to go to that, that um, discharge meeting, that discharge DVD, um, on the first day. So they can get that on the f straight away. And then the women who are suitable and want to um, are offered to go home on day one if they want to. Okay. It's very much, I put it forward as a patient choice. This is what it is all about, okay? One of the challenges we had when we set it up was everybody knew this was reduced length of day, had to be, and it was go home in 24 hours. This is 24 hours cesarean section. I, I had to quash that a lot. Doctors, midwives, a lot of people, because it's not a 24 hour cesarean section. Um, and I hope that it won't, w we won't ever get to that point. Um, I had, I've had got a lot of people working on this project and looking at the data, um, and I had an, a medical student put in a, an abstract and she put it in after I'd seen it, um, and it said, um, cesarean section, day case in the future. And I didn't know the title until after she'd given it. It was like, <laughs> anyway. I don't think we're planning for that. Key thing for enhanced recovery program is setting, patient, set in, setting pa patient expectations, okay? As I said, all the way through from the antenatal clinic day assessment on the ward. And then when they come in, it's absolutely reinforcing the patient's expectations, telling them the same thing about their, what the recovery and what they're going to be expected to do. We give out a questionnaire, um, and when we first gave it out, I had fantastic medical students. Seven days a week, they came to the hospital, helping giving them out and picking them up. Um, and we showed that um, all the women are happy with the preoperative information we give, and they're all happy with their um, analgesia that they get. Um, the information we're getting from the data now is the same for this. And then just going through the key parts of the Enhanced Recovery Program, um, we found that um, but now we're getting 80% of women are having a drink. In fact, it's higher than that. And I've got some graphs coming up. Um, these are data, some of this data has only just come through this week, so it's changed a bit. Basically, we are, they are drinking quickly. They are eating. They are, um, we are increasingly getting women to mobilise into the chair. Why they're not mobilising into the chair is because they've still got their drip in and they've still got their <coughs> catheter in because we ask them why they haven't got into the chair. Um, so we need to look at, at in, um, helping the staff encourage patients, empower patients to fit, say, actually moving from there to there, you can do with a catheter. Um, increasingly getting out of bed quicker, they are getting dressed in home clothes, um, and more people have gone to the discharge meeting. I think with the discharge meeting, certainly the women who've had a child before, they probably think they don't need the discharge information, so we may not get that, that number higher. And then just graphically, what we can show is that from 2012, the blue lines to our green lines now this year, the patients are achieving things much quicker. So in fact, it's, nearly, it's up to, um, I think, nearly 90% of women are having a drink within the first hour, um, and 60% are having a, something to eat within the first two hours, and I think it's up to 80% within three hours. So we are achieving that. And again, if you look at mobilisation, you can see there's much more green over this side, so we're getting people up and out of bed quicker than we had before, which is the key thing.
one of the most important things is for the women who really know what they've had before and this time and see the change. So there's some, somebody has written, said, last time I stayed in bed for 24 hours, this time is great. So the expectations were that you didn't get out of bed, okay? And now that they are, that you do get out of bed. Going home at the end of day one. So this is absolutely key to make sure we're sending the appropriate patients home and we're sending them home safely. So it must be patient choice first of all and they must have appropriate support at home. They must be discharged from midwifery free care, which means a doctor says that there are no, no other medical problems and don't need any further review. And in our unit, we can actually do that in the operating theatre. As soon as the section's finished, the doctor who's done the operation can say, yes, they're fit for midwifery free discharge and no doctor has to see them before they leave the door. All observations have to be stable since they hit recovery. Their haemoglobin repeat result has to be available if it was taken. If, ha if they need TTOs to go home with, which they all do, they have to be back from pharmacy. It's not, I'm going home, my husband's coming back to pick them up at 8 o'clock tonight. No, they have to be in the ward and they have to be in the patient's bag when they go home. There have to be absolutely no baby concerns and the um, examination of the newborn um, has to have been done or booked because we do have a clinic where they can come back if they, if they want to. And contact with the community midwife has to have been made um, with um, a team that is going to actually come and see them on their first day at home. And certainly we have the Lambeth and we have the Wandsworth and different teams and that can't always be, um, be guaranteed. And when we first started it, we were absolutely categorical. It was really only the Wandsworth people going home because the women who were in Lambeth certainly had a bit less cover and it was a definite going, um, visit on the first day going home. So this is what everybody wants to see, is cutting le length of stay, okay? And this is quite clear. What we could see in 2012 and the six months before we brought this in is that 4% of people were going home on day one. They were all staff or healthcare professionals. They were the ones who were going home. <laughs> we brought in the Enhanced Recovery Programme in September 2012. We looked at the first six months of, of 2013. And just as our patient survey had said, I was surprised it was so accurate, a third of people were going home on day one. So that's what we found and we were asking people if we want to. And this year we found actually we've stepped up again and we've reduced people staying longer. So I think in units like ours, where capacity is such a large issue, this is really, really important. Importantly, what we have to think about, though, um, is readmissions. I've got all the readmissions from this year and last year, and we're looking at, looking at those. The notes that have been brought to me to have a look at, none of them have gone home on day one anyway. Um, so where their recovery program, the enhanced recovery program, and their readmission probably aren't linked, they would have come back in anyway, but they are being looked at a bit more closely. The big thing that was delaying people on the frustration on the ward and a workload was doing the post-op haemoglobin. And then again, we looked at our, a six-month cohort of pre-op haemoglobin and a drop of haemoglobin and what the EBL was, the, the estimated blood loss. And we found that we categorised them all and we found that basically if you lost definitely le less than 500 mils, your haemoglobin did not, drop did not drop significantly and you didn't even need iron tablets to go home with. And that's about 60% of our women. So 60% of the full blood count on our postnatal ward now don't have to happen, which is marvellous for the midwives, the phlebotomists, the women, the doctors, everybody. Um, so that's a change we've brought on. Um, I have um, asked midwives for feedback about patients they're going to see at home. Any particular problems? Do you think um, any issues that, we, that these ladies have actually gone home early? And we haven't had anything at all. Um, a planned survey is for, to contact the women at six weeks to make sure that they are still happy that they went home at the time they did and did they have encounter any other problems. And that's something that we're just prepping up at the moment. Um, when I start, before I started this, I went to other units which were supposedly doing enhanced recovery programme. Um, I, Winchester, Essex, a, few, a couple others outside London said they were doing it, but they, were ac they weren't really doing it. They were actually just wanting to bring their um, length of stay down from three days to two days in general. And so we were actually looking for something quite different and looking at it. So um, with the amount of data we've got, the um, NHS Improving Quality um, Commission have been in touch asking for our, our results and they've got some data. And in fact, I just checked my email this morning and there's a workshop coming up in November that they've asked me to come along with the information here, to looking at it on even more on a national perspective um, and getting it going in units. And obviously we have great support now um, from the network here and I've led a couple of um, workshops for people within the network um, and there have been um, units outside the network who've been in touch about our programme. Um, 
great thanks to a lot of people, in particular medical students who worked very hard, and one of our senior registrars again this, um, this year has um, helped me with the data. Um, and thank you for the midwives for looking after the women and helping with the Enhanced Recovery Program, and all the women in particular who've uh, given us the questionnaires, because this is where most of the data comes from. Thank you.